Hey everyone, today we are reviewing Wave 2 of the Indiana Jones Adventure Series. Previously I have reviewed 9 of these figures on my channel if you want to go check out that video. Special thanks to Gary from Return of the Nerd Star Wars for getting these sent out to me early from Taiwan. I will have him linked below in case you are interested in getting some figures early. First we have the Temple Escape Indiana Jones. This is a re-release of the very first figure that we got. No noticeable changes. I did feel like the weathering on the leather, the leathering was a little bit more intense than I was used to. And then we have the actual base. So this is the real reason that you would buy this pack. A nice dark wash in the details here and that moss effect looks nice. He does come with the weirdly colored red whip that we see in the first release and he comes with the gold idol. He doesn't come with the alternate hands however. He also comes with this pistol and then a new addition is this little satchel here with the painted details that I was surprised to see and the actual movement on this is pretty simple. It just kind of drops down a quarter inch, not too exciting, but it's mostly meant as just a display piece and I think it's really cool to be getting these nice world building pieces for Indiana Jones. I wish we saw that kind of stuff in the Star Wars Black series. Next, this figure got the biggest round of applause at Star Wars Celebration when it was revealed. A short round. This actor has had quite an amazing year, and now he gets an action figure of his younger self. I don't usually like soft goods. I think the jacket here is excusable, but I would probably display him without. And so this is the build and artifact piece here. I don't know why it has two layers there, but the the hat actually fits really nicely. That looks great. Like this really looks a lot more like short round to me. And all of these figures really just come with such cool accessories. So he comes with this little torch here with the translucent flame, which is not easily removable, but it's probably two pieces and could be separated with a little hot water. Comes with his dagger and then the little Indiana Jones voodoo doll, which fits quite nicely into his hand. And the dagger as well fits really easily into his right hand here. He also comes with Indiana Jones's hat. And I think this is the only time we can actually separate the Indiana Jones hat since it's glued to all of the other indie figures. This looks great on there. What a fun little figure to have on the shelf with the rest of the adventure series. Next we're going to open the Walter Donovan figure. This isn't necessarily part of this wave. I got this one on Amazon about a few weeks ago. Uh, I've already opened it before so he's going to have his kind of freaky head on there from when he drinks from the wrong grail. He also comes with that wrong grail which we'll see in a second but really cool paint detail here on this head. The Black Series team must be having so much fun being able to do some gore after doing so many years of just Star Wars. The standard head here fits on nicely and then I was able to just pop the hand off since these hands are all interchangeable. If you want to know more about that you can watch my first video where I kind of showcase how the hands work in this adventure series. It's a little bit different than we see in the Black series. He comes with his pistol and he also comes with this little fragment of the stone slab. I forget what this is called but a nice bit of dry brushing on there just bringing out that detail in the text. Next this is probably my favorite Indiana Jones figure that we've got in the line so far. I don't really know exactly what it is about this but it just has so much cool weathering and detail on here from the end of Temple of Doom and he comes with the jaw from the artifact as well as the sword which has gotten a bit warped in the package. I noticed this happened to someone else's that reviewed this as well. Uh, hopefully a little bit of hot water can straighten this out. And then he also comes with the same whips that we've seen in other indie figures with that same terrible little strap to attach it to his belt. They seem to have fixed this with the newest Dial of Destiny figure which we'll see a little bit later. The only thing I don't like about this figure is the facial expression. He's got this weird like it looks like he's biting his lip but not in a cool way and uh, a little bit of painted detail on the knee there showing the pants being ripped and then the little strap on the hands there. The articulation on all of these is very similar to what we've seen before, so if you want to see a little bit more in depth, again, I recommend my first review. Next we have one of the first, like, well-done shirtless bodies that we've ever seen in the Hasbro 6-inch scale. So there's a couple of customs that you kind of need a bare torso for, and it's pretty rare, tricky to get one. I'm thinking of maybe like a Clone Wars Anakin from when he has the blue paint on his chest. I should mention that the orange stones that we just saw are glow in the dark. They've kind of done a weird little fade on the chest there. You can see there's like a little triangle of a wash on there. And then he does have these butterfly joints in the arms which allows for some better articulation but I think with a shirtless sculpt like this it would be better to have fewer joints on display. I think he could have just done with some regular shoulders here. But I think it's kind of a principle of the line to have butterfly joints in the torso and they probably reused the sculpt for some of the other indies as well. Then he's got this really amazing accessory here with this gold paint. This looks incredible. He also comes with the satchel, which I thought was just the same one that he has on all of the other figures, but this one actually opens, so I thought that was really interesting. It has a lot less paint detail. It doesn't have the gold accents on the buckle and the snaps there, but you can totally just like actually open this up and put something in there. Maybe the book that came with one of the older figures. And then these pegs actually fit quite nicely into these holes. A lot of times the soft pegs don't 
perform very well, but I was really impressed to see that. There's definitely like an ultimate Indiana Jones that can be made from combining a few of these different releases and maybe adding a little bit of paint detail, but no one in particular has everything. We'll assemble the build and artifact later. She comes with this little, I don't know if it's a light or a camera, and then this backpack, which is actually really nice. I love a good backpack. The sculpt itself, I love the way that the clothes look, but I'm not really seeing Phoebe Waller-Bridge in the face here. The backpack fits on her really nicely. You can tell that this was sculpted specifically for this figure, like just the way that the straps naturally sit is just absolutely perfect. It's nice to see. And then she holds the camera light pretty well. This is actually what I look like when I'm filming at um, Frank and Son. We are going to compare all of the Indiana Jones that have been released so far later in this video, so stay tuned for that. Next we have the Dial of Destiny Indiana Jones. Some people were asking me if this is the same head sculpt that we've seen in the younger indies, and it's definitely new. He has a little bit more wrinkles on the face. It's very subtle, and this is awesome. He has a little peg on his belt here that the whip just pegs right into, so you don't have to deal with that weird strap, and also that's just nice brown color on the rope. Looks a lot better. He also comes with the cobra that is the top of the artifact there. And then and again, a really nice, cool sculpted backpack. He has his little camera light. I think it's probably just a light, but that fits nicely into his hand. And I like characters being able to hold accessories that aren't just weapons. I think it's kind of more interesting to have some characters holding stuff that aren't just like guns and lightsabers. Let's put together the artifact here. It's pretty soft plastic, but it does fit nicely and kind of clicks together. The stones are quite tricky to get in because uh, my fingers are wider than the opening, but it has this little opening at the bottom, so if you drop them in, you can easily get them out. I'm just going to use some needle nose pliers here so my fat fingers don't have to uh, knock these over. This is what my floor looked like after unboxing all of these. I'm going to recycle all of this since I don't really save the boxes anymore. Look how many Indiana Jones figures we've had already. This is just like the first year that this line has been out, and there are even more coming. Let me know which of these seven Indiana Jones figures is your favorite so far, and if you own any of these or if you'll be picking up any extras. We also have Marcus Brody, Rene Belloc, and Indiana Jones with his Cairo look with a re-release of that monkey. And then this is the upcoming pipeline if you're interested in the figures that are officially announced by Hasbro but just not shown in the physical form yet. That is all for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. I mostly am a Star Wars The Black Series channel, but I've been covering all of the Indiana Jones releases so far and I plan to continue doing so. If you're only an Indiana Jones collector and you're not collecting Star Wars at all, I would really love to hear from you in the comments below. That is all for today's video. Thank you all for watching as always, and I'll see you next time.